السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear colleagues and friends Hope you are doing well and you are preparing well for the exam I know it's a very stressful time The exam will start after two days But please relax As I told you before, it is the easiest part of uh, MRSOG examination Act yourself and you will do it inshallah uh, So today according to your request uh, We will discuss the station of abnormal cervical smear in pregnancy this case, it came as a case of structural discussion before. The scenario uh, was uh, assessing the following skill, the patient safety, applied clinical knowledge, communication with patients and communication with colleagues and information gathering. So uh, this is uh, an evaluation of all the domains. The scenario that you are an ST5, that you are about to see Miss Sharon Stones. She is 35 years old in the antenatal clinic. Miss Sharon, she has a routine cervical smear. And then after the smear, she got unplanned pregnancy. Uh, her GP sent the smear result with her as she has an appointment today in the antenatal care clinic. Your consultant will not be with you in the clinic. So he will ask you to read the cervical cytology result. And then he will ask you some questions about the case before you see Ms. Sharon and to put a proper plan for her management. So during the 10 minutes of the station, you are expected to explain the results of the smear and formulate management plan, describe how you will tell the patient the results of the smear, and then you will answer the examiner's question. So here, according to the smear, it was written a smear for Miss Sharon Stones, which is 35 years old. Her last period was two weeks ago, and the result of the smear, it came as a typical squamous cells, high-grade dyscryosis, high-grade squamous lesions cannot be excluded, CIM2 or 3 cannot be excluded, and the recommendation for colposcopy and HPV risk assessment. So this is a structured discussion. Uh, you will have two types of examiner in this case. One examiner will remain silent all over the time. He will be expecting you to answer the questions here to explain the result, formulate the management plan, describe how you will tell the patient, and he may ask you at the end. The other type of examiners, which I myself, I like this type, which is asking you question by question during the station, so you can save your time and he will prompt you uh, every now and then move. So what are the expected questions in this station? Usually the first question in any structure discussion will, will be what are the other information you need to know about the patient? The second will be how to formulate a management plan. And the third, at what gestation you will do colposcopy if needed. And then, according to the result of colposcopy, if it is low grade, low grade, what's your action? And if it is high grade, what will be your action? And what you will do if you suspect cancer or invasive lesion? And any decision you are taking, will you take it individually or you will take an opinion of other people? And then what is the risk of LEDs? And how you will tell the patient about the result in absence of your consultant. So these are the expected questions in this station. So let's go one by one. What are the other information you need to know about here? Please don't fall in the trap in this station. In this station, you have two points. The patient is in early pregnancy and this is her booking visit. Number two, she has an abnormal smear. So the information you need to know about here, you need to ask about the current pregnancy as this pregnancy is unplanned, you should ask her about her wishes to continue the pregnancy. Now you have to explore the point of abnormal cervical smear. So you will ask about any abnormal bleeding, especially if it is intermenstrual or postcoital bleeding. You will ask about any abnormal discharge or pain, any abnormal GIT or urinary symptoms. You should ask about the menstrual periods and the use of any contraceptions. The previous smear results, if it was up to date and normal, if she has any history 
of sexually transmitted infections. You should ask sensitively about the partner history, if she's in regular and stable relation with a single partner or she has multiple partners. The previous obstetric history, if she has any previous medical or surgical history, of course, in each station, please don't forget to ask about the drug allergy. And in this station specifically, you should ask about if the patient received HIV vaccine or no. So this will be the answer of the first question about the further information you need to know about here. The second question here will be how to formulate your management plan. Again, this station, booking visit, and patient who's coming goes abnormal cervical smear result. So the plan here will be the first, the plan regarding the ongoing pregnancy. This patient should have a routine booking investigations. You should arrange for appointment of ultrasound scan. You should describe a folic acid for her as this is unplanned pregnancy. And of course, she did not start. And you should talk to her about after delivery, the plan for uh, having a proper method of contraception to avoid getting unplanned pregnancy in the future. So this is the first part of the station, which is a plan regarding the ongoing pregnancy. The second part of the plan is the plan regarding the abnormal cervical smear. According to the recommendation, this patient may need colposcopy and HPV risk assessment or HPV triage. So, if you have an abnormal cervical smear during pregnancy, actually, this slide will answer most of the question in this station. So, if you have abnormal cervical smear during pregnancy, and this was routine smear, so you will repeat the smear three months after pregnancy. So if it was routine smear, your action will be repeat the smear three months after pregnancy. But if it is abnormal smear, if it is abnormal smear, you will do grading. If it is low grade smear or high grade smear. If it is low grade, means a CIN1 or less, you will do HBV triage. HBV triage, if HBV positive, you will go for colposcopy. If HBV negative, you will delay the colposcopy till after delivery, three months after delivery. This is the first possibility that she has an abnormal smear with low grade lesion. But if the patient is high grade lesion, in this case, you should do colposcopy. And the colposcopy here will be done at the end of the first trimester or at the start of the second trimester. So this is if it is routine smear, and if it is abnormal smear. If the patient has abnormal smear before or abnormal colposcopy, this colposcopy should not be delayed. So these are the three possibilities that you may have if the patient have an abnormal smear. If it was routine smear, you will repeat it three months after pregnancy. If abnormal smear with low grade, you will do HBV triage. If HBV positive, she will go for colposcopy. If HBV negative, you will wait after delivery. If it is high grade lesion, you will do colposcopy and the colposcopy will be done at the end of the first trimester or at the start of the second trimester. The third possibility, if, if the previous abnormal colposcopy, so colposcopy here should not be delayed. So we have five situations or five scenarios in this case. Two scenarios, the patient has to attend to the colposcopy clinic and three situation, you can wait or postpone the colposcopy three months after delivery. The two situations where the patient has to attend, if the patient has CGIN or cervical glandular intraepithelial neoplasia. The other scenario where the patient has to attend, if the original treatment, if she had treatment for CIN two or three, and the margins were not clear, or the specialist was not sure if all abnormal areas were treated. So these two scenarios, the patient has to attend for colposcopy. If it is CGIN or treated CIN two or three, and the patient is not sure about, or the doctor is not sure about if all abnormal areas are treated. 
Another three stations or three scenarios, the patient can wait until the baby is born, then the corposcopy will be done. These scenarios, the first one, if this is the first follow-up after original treatment for CIN1, so if it was CIN1 and treated, and this is a follow-up, it can be postponed till after delivery. Or this is the first follow-up after original treatment of CIN2 or 3, but the specialist is sure that all abnormal areas are treated. So if it is CIN2 or 3 treated, and he's sure that all abnormal areas are treated, the patient can wait till the baby is born or after delivery. Or if it is second or more follow-up and the patient did not miss any appointment before and all the smears were normal, this patient can wait till after delivery. So only two scenarios the patient has to attend if it is CGIN or if it is treated CIN two or three and we are not sure if all areas are treated. So this patient has to come for colposcopy during the pregnancy. Now the aim of colposcopy during the pregnancy is to exclude invasive disease or cancer. This is the aim of colposcopy. You do not do colposcopy because you want to treat unless the patient has a suspicion of invasion or cancer. Any other condition, you can postpone the treatment till after delivery. So. The second important slide here is about the results of colposcopy during the pregnancy. So if the results came as CIN1 or less, so you will repeat three months after delivery. If the result is CIN2 or 3, you will ask yourself, if the patient did colposcopy at less than 28 weeks, you will repeat it again at the end of second trimester, which is around 28 weeks. If it is more done, the colposcopy was done more than 28 weeks, or the patient now is more than 28 weeks when you discovered the CIN2 or 3, so the next colposcopy will repeat it three months after delivery. The third scenario, if you have an invasive disease, so at this point, you will do biopsy. So we have three scenarios of the result of colposcopy, CIN1 or less, to repeat three months after delivery, CIN2 or three, done before 28 weeks, repeat the colposcopy at 28 weeks. If the patient is more than 28 weeks, you will repeat the colposcopy three months after delivery, but if it is invasive disease, you will do biopsy or less. So back to our questions, now we answered what other information we need to know about this patient regarding the pregnancy and regarding the abnormal cervical smear, we did formulate a management plan regarding her pregnancy and regarding the abnormal smear. So at what gestation will do colposcopy? Our patient has high-grade lesion and CIN2 and 3 cannot be excluded. So in this case, we will do colposcopy at the end of the first trimester or at the early in the second trimester. If it is high-grade or CIN2 or 3, it has to be repeated at 28 weeks. Now, the fourth question. If colposcopy is showing low-grade lesion, what's your action? If it is low-grade lesion, we will do HPV triage. If HPV positive, we'll do colposcopy. If HPV negative, we will postpone till three months after delivery. If colposcopy is showing high-grade lesion, in this case, what you will do? High-grade lesion means a CIN two or three. It will depend if the patient is less than 28 weeks, you will repeat it again at 28 weeks. But if the patient is more than 28 weeks, you will repeat it after delivery, three months after delivery. Now the sixth question, what you will do if you suspect cancer or invasive lesion? So in this case, you need to do biopsy. One question, will you take the decision unilaterally? Means, are you going to take the decision yourself? No. The answer will be, we need uh, the, uh, to involve my consultant. I will involve the multidisciplinary team, including the consultant, the gynae oncologist, the pathologist, and the radiologist, and all the, and the uh, specialist nurse. So the decision will be according to the multidisciplinary team. So the next question, if you decided to take a biopsy, 
or let's large lobe excision of the transitional zone. What are the possible risk of LITS if it is done in pregnancy? Actually, to counsel the patient that there is high risk of hemorrhage, high risk of infection. There may be cervical shortening and cervical insufficiency that leads to preterm labor. And there is also possibility of rupture of membrane. The, as a result of cervical fibrosis that results from the surgery, there may be cervical dystocia and labor abnormalities. And there may be a possibility of traumatic postpartum hemorrhage due to fibrous or stiff cervix. So due to these risks, the LITS during pregnancy has to be done in a place with appropriate facilities to intervene if there is any emergency. So the last question, how you are going to tell the patient in absence of your consultant? So this is like breaking bad news. So first, you have to apologize, your consultant is not there, and you have to take a permission from the patient to go on with the consultation. Then please, before reading any results of the smear or ultrasound or blood test, you have to confirm the name and the age of the patient. Then ask her what she knows about the result. Because if you will ask her about what she knows about the result, so she may, make the situation more easier for you. Then try start to explain. Uh, sign post. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have good news. Then pause for a few seconds. We have some concerns regarding the result of the smear test, which is a sample that's taken from the neck of your womb. There are some changes in the cells of the neck of your womb. These changes are at a stage before they become cancerous. These changes can be mild or severe. As your smear test is abnormal with severe changes, you need to be referred for an investigation called the colposcopy, which is more detailed look of the cervix. Colposcopy will not harm. Colposcopy will not harm your baby and they provide a valuable and reassuring information to help us in putting the best plan for your treatment. According to the result of the colposcopy, group of specialists who call the MBT team will decide either to continue with follow-up, then to repeat the test after three months from the delivery, or we will go for surgery to take a biopsy, which is a small piece of the neck of the womb for examination. You are more likely to bleed if you have a biopsy treatment when you are pregnant. And please mention that you will give the patient a patient information leaflet, and you will arrange another appointment with your consultant. So this is a question about how you are going to tell the patient. I know it is a um, station of a structure discussion, but this was one of the questions from the examiner, how you are going to tell the patient in absence of your consultant. So apology for that the consultant is not present, take her permission to go on with the consultation, then confirm her name and date of birth, ask her what she knows about the result, then start sign posting for breaking the bad news and give her the plan for management. So this was the station, how you proceed during the discussion. Best of luck in your exam. I keep doing the hard work. And if you like it, please again, remember me, your prayers, and share it with your friends. Thank you and have a good luck.